Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Rodeo Town Podcast. Got our good friends here around the table. Talk about all things ranching, rodeo. Uh, hear the Buster Frierson story, <laughs> really, like the origin story. Uh, Have yeah. you ever told it anywhere? Yeah, maybe once. Yeah. Uh-huh. But like on a podcast? Uh, maybe. Oh, you have? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You've been on some first. podcasts. I've been on one or two. Joe Rogan? No, Joe hadn't called me yet. Yeah. Has okay. Joe called you? Oh, yeah. I missed it. You did. It was a call. When Joe calls you, tell him that you're bringing your partner. You'll be my bodyguard. Yeah. Okay. Because that's another thing we talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we need bodyguards. Oh, jeez. Thank you to uh, Canam, pronounced Canam, for bringing us this podcast. The feedbuggycorporate.com. That's, a, that's the website. Feed buggy corporate. I'm not. Gotcha. I'm not bull crapping. I, was say, I, I like told them. That up. Nope. I started using feed buggy. They took it, ran with it. That's their new website. Perfect. Look it up. I'm telling feed you. Feedbuggy.com. No, feed buggy corporate. Oh, feed buggy corporate. Yeah, because we were doing some videos and and <laughs> JB took the the K and M and Wes was in the barrel. <laughs> The, the bull barrel uh-huh. and he came full speed and hit this barrel <laughs> with the can am and i looked at the camera and i was like that's not approved by feed buggy corporate <laughs> and they're like we like that we're gonna run with it perfect there feed you buggy. Go. it's the feed buggy that can feed all your feeding needs wow now on to the podcast rodeo time gotta get her on down the road just making sure got everything rolling donnie's had a hard time lately. Hey, it was one time. What, what? Po- what podcast was it? It wasn't a podcast. Oh. It was a rodeo time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad for this guy. <laughs> we did the we did a Black Friday. We did a giveaway on Black Friday, and it's every one hundred dollar order gets entered in a drawing to win the dirt bike, my oh, really? little mini bike. Yeah, right, right. <gasps> and the sweetheart of a man from Connecticut. Connecticut. I, the, the deal was you win the dirt bike and you get to be in a rodeo time episode. Right on. Connecticut. Yeah. Drove down. No kidding. He's like 66 or 7 and uh, retired. 72. 72. Yeah. Retired. <laughs> came in his RV and uh, nicest man. So we start filming in here. Fix him up with Dale Ware. Great conversation. He's funny. What'd you retire from? Work. <laughs> <laughs> Took him to the beaches. Got to ride Boone. No, really? Rode the dirt bike. We raced on the, the feed buggy, the Canam, and I won. And then we took him to lunch. And then uh, Donnie got back, started editing the vlog, and the sound wasn't on. There's no oh, audio. No audio. Gotta on get any him to come the... back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Just know how many trips from here. Connecticut. I mean, you know, it's probably, what, five or six-hour drive, huh? 20 he's at 24 7 right? he was coming down here anyways oh was he <laughs> yeah. yeah so it was 22 frames a second and when it's not 24 frames a second it doesn't catch any audio yeah it i mean it was my fault 100 was that was that a new lesson learned yes or? absolutely yep yeah. oh my god worst yeah. experiences generally are the best lessons yes yeah yep. that's what happened <laughs> Do you have any stories like that where you have a worst experience where is the best lesson? Whew. Yeah. Much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What category? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, which category would you yeah. like to start with? Um, yeah. So enough about Donnie and his mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for a living, Buster? Uh, anything and everything to make a dollar, mainly punch cows. Yep. Cowboy for a living, I guess. Is that what? Is that proper term? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you make yeah. your, you can't show up a foot. No, you got to show up uh, yeah. horseback. horseback. You show up yeah. a foot back, and you're not getting paid. Yeah, most of the time, right? Yeah, yeah. that means you make your living cowboy. Okay. Yeah, the, yeah, I cowboy for a living. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you can show up a foot, it's it's iffy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, when they tell you to go home because you don't have a horse, that's pretty much. Mm-hmm. What all are you doing? What all have you done this year? Oh man, uh, this year's been pretty hectic. It's uh, been good, been really busy. I, uh, you know, the start of the year, I've gave, I've got a few cows scattered out from Waxahachie to Grayford, just right down the road. Your own cows? Yes, sir. And uh, attend to those. And just kind of been helping a few people here and there, you know, branding a few calves. And started about a month ago, and it's kind of picked up and gotten really busy, and I'm fixing to take off and 
we're going to slide out to West Texas for about two weeks and then go a little further to West Texas for another week and then maybe come home for a week and go back to Arizona. And I've kind of been everywhere and anywhere, you know, and just kind of going and doing what, where I need and what I need. So a lot of the people that reach out or end up coming here, they think that um, we pretty much drag calves 365 days a year. Not not exactly drag calves, but a lot of people think that it's the more romantic stuff. Of course, yeah. You know, yeah. either we're dragging calves or screwing off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what people think if you Do watch you guys our ever stuff. Work, <laughs> <laughs> which you know, no offense taken. I get it. You know, that's what is on camera. But walk us through a, d- a year in the life of 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 Buster, like like the seasons of cowboying. Cowboy like, seasons, like starting in January. Uh, like what are you typically doing in the dead of winter? So in January, you're feeding. You know, um, like this last winter, we had a pretty good winter storm come down for about six or seven days, which is probably the coldest it's ever been. So we were, you know, feeding, putting out hay, busting ice, and keeping up with everything and trying to tend to cows in sub-zero temperatures, which are not normal around here. Uh, but January, mainly, you're just feeding cake putting out some hay, you know, checking minerals, making sure they got water. Uh, some guys are fall calvers, and they'll kind of start calving, you know, right about February. So February, might you might get a little little bit of calving in then. Um, I, I'm a fall calver, so we branded some calves in January. And uh, also, I got a set of spring calving cows too, so they're, they're calving as we speak right now. And uh, – I wean those big calves off of them, the cows that we branded here not too long. But January, mainly you're feeding, putting out mineral, just kind of making your rounds, tending to whatever you need to tend to, building fence, fixing pens, you know, just kind of whatever. You look after any yearlings? I do. I help a guy around wit, and uh, I help. He's got about 3,000 yearlings turned out, and uh, I help him quite a bit. Psh, that ain't nothing. And so, you know, <laughs> you kidding. process yearlings and then you trot through the yearlings and you doctor yearlings, you know, pretty much every day and uh, moving them, shaking them around, putting them in pre, preconditioning yards and turning them out on wheat. And That's a pretty good way. If you can have like two or three buddies that got a handful of yearlings like that's a good way as a day worker to like oh, yeah no doubt stay sharp and right. get paid in january february yeah no doubt it's a good you know and it's uh, those january and february you never know some days are 70 degrees and some days yes. are 15 degrees you right. know it's miserable so you never know but yeah it's a great way to stay sharp and it's a great way to ride some young horses and get get out and keep yourself sharp with your rope you know and it's a it's a I, I enjoy it, you know. I mean, it's a it's something to do, and it's 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 cowboy. There ain't no doubt about it. And I'm usually by myself, so I rope and tie everything down, and you know, doctor everything by myself. So it's a it's just one of them deals where you just enjoy you just it. like steer wrestle all of them, don't you? Yeah, no. <laughs> you don't you don't like run into just, a back leg yeah. <laughs> or trip them or nothing like that. You yeah, like, yeah, I just I just get off you and run wrestle. Down the rope yeah, yeah, flank the flank five ways. Yeah, you bet. No. Yeah. No, no. I, I wish we could show the clip <laughs> of you doing that that California roll. Yeah, yeah. When you need uh, to dig that up. True and Gage, and do we have that footage from mm-hmm. Six Super Punchers yeah. Punching? Yeah. yeah, it's in there somewhere. We got yeah. just forget what people are gonna think. We're gonna find it. We're gonna post yeah, it. Yeah, let's let's do it. It's, all it's right. called the California roll, people. Right, we're gonna, we're gonna right. teach you. And it that. ain't nothing about sushi. And no. it ain't nothing. No, I was about to say, <laughs> there's, there's no sashimi. There ain't no <laughs> crab. <laughs> there ain't no crab meat in this one. All right, so now we're to springtime. S- springtime, you know, which is like right now. I mean, springtime starts, and that's what I say. I, I helped some people last week, and we branded. I don't know about 150 one day, and then we went and branded about 200. Uh, to over about three days you know different places but i'll travel around and go to different ranches and help them brand i'm fixing to leave like i said and go out west and i'll help mccoy remy ranches which is about 278 thousand acres out in balmeray kind of far west texas and what are they what's the uh stocking right there like 100, uh, about, 100 acres per yeah cow? about one to every 400 <laughs> acres one cow per every 400 acres if if they eat rocks really well yeah, you yeah, know? yeah 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 so no, it's a big country. It's a really cool country. It's uh. I didn't do it. <clears throat> what are you tearing up Nothing. over there? She threw her phone down. Golly. 
but okay. it's a lot of fun it's always a good crew you get to see a lot of country you know your horses you'll trot 15 or 20 miles a day and then brand 150 200 calves and you know you'll do that for 10 or 12 days in a row and so you get a lot of miles put on your horses and you know it's a it's a fun it's a fun deal it turns into a job no doubt about it but it's it's always fun when you got a good crew and you get to see a lot of new country and ride a few colts you know i'll take i think i've got three three-year-olds right now that'll go with me that are good enough to go and they'll kind of start their career this spring and you know at the end of the spring they'll come home and they'll be totally different horses you oh, know yeah. um i'll leave balmeray and i'll go to dell city and help another friend of mine out there for about three or four days and we'll brand 250 300 calves there I think I'm going to come home for about a week and then kind of tend to my stuff and then go to Arizona and help some guys in Arizona for a couple of weeks. So, And that will continue through the end of May m- most of the time. You know, you'll get a few you'll get a few late Brandons in early June, but it's too hot around here. Did you here. ever go up north? No, I hadn't been up north. Because uh, that, they'll brand later. Like, they'll, they'll be branding in June. Yeah. I'm thinking about going to Haythorns this year, Craig Haythorn and Sage and them. They've always asked me to come up, and I'm available now. I can, so I think I'll probably try to go up there mm-hmm. if, and hang out with those guys. But it's, Where's uh, that? What's that? Where's that? In Nebraska. Oh, okay. So um, they have quite a bit of country, and I think they brand for a little while. So. Do you help any? And then in summertime, people are picking up bulls yeah yeah help we'll pick up bulls that. yeah i'll help i'll probably go back to uh Balmeray and help them pick up bulls mccoys and you know i'll pick up some bulls around here little outfits just here and there you know just some guys around but uh and i'll pick up my bulls and so i'll kind of do my stuff you know in the summertime yeah. most of the time when it heats up people kind of slow the livestock work down because it does it gets too hot and you can't i mean you can work till about 10 10 30 11 and uh and it's pretty much over with for the day. So a lot of guys will do a lot of fencing, a lot of water line, and a lot of water, you know, fixing whatever around the barn, around their pens, and I'll, I will be doing the same thing. So Then uh, weaning. Yeah, yeah, and then you kind of get into early fall where, you know, you go around and pick, you know, picking, gathering cows, and you're sorting cows, and you're sorting dries off and weaning cows, and, shipping and doing that kind of thing so i mean it just kind of it's a it's a revolving process that you do the same thing but it's generally different places and you know there's always something different happening in different country and it's a it's a lot of fun you know and then you get into winter again starts all starts over. all over again it's like a circle it goes round and round that's it yeah no doubt so and then every once in a while i get to come help you so i mean that oh, kind yeah. of breaks the monotony of why, why would it break the monotony? I mean, we're it's not, a little different when I come help you. I mean, we're not like a real ranch. Yeah, I mean, you're a real rancher. We just have fun. We yeah, just have more fun, fun than exactly. real ranch. Exactly. That's, that's what, what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. Like, it's it. not as serious yeah. as everybody Be careful. else. Yeah. Someone you're always not as hurt. serious. That is true. That is 100% true. <laughs> it's a lot more laid back. Oh, no doubt. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. Someone always gets hurt. Gosh. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. I'm, I'm, yeah, like, how are you? Good. Feel good. Yeah. Oh, I was I'm thinking, s- I was like, who got hurt last time? Yeah. No, I'm this still guy. bruised. Yeah. This guy got I was hurt. There. It was yeah. a month <laughs> yesterday since it happened. I still got a bruise. I like bet. Right here. Yeah. You hit really, really. I don't, do everybody know what happened? Yeah. They do. So, everybody knows what happened now. What 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 happened to you? Let me know was, what happened. I was, well, I was there, but I want to know what this happened. I bucking horse. <laughs> it was probably at like 12 or 14 seconds when it happened. <laughs> I'd been riding him. <laughs> and I was riding him an ex- extra eight seconds. You were riding for Lane? <laughs> no, I was riding for Rickle. Oh, okay. It's a bull that died this year. Oh, okay. And, uh, well, we put him down. <laughs> um, so I was riding an extra eight for Rickle. And in the second eight <laughs> seconds, I come off. I'm flying through the air. Flying. And having been, yeah. I don't want to say bucked off before, but, you know, I've, I've not in, liked the way a horse was bucking before, <laughs> so I jumped off. Got off. I was in a familiar situation and through my mind, I'm like, I'm going to probably be okay because I've landed like this before, (laughs) but I had not landed like that on that hard of an arena. It was really hard. It was real. (laughs) Joe, the intern is dragging the arena as we speak. So my (laughs) shoulder starts and you know, I didn't slide, but this, you know, but like, but as I hit like in the slide, I'm like, okay, it's broke. My my collarbone's broke. Before I stopped, right, I'm like, my right. collarbone's broke. 
And then my next thought was, I'm just glad I didn't dislocate my shoulder. Exactly. <laughs> like, I've, I've had enough injury. I've had enough. I've been bucked off enough. Like, okay, it's broke, but here's the bright side. <laughs> you <know>? like, <laughs> Because you know hey, that was a description, like that description. I was, I was there, y'all. I was. Yeah, so, he was picking I, up. I was picking up for DB and Double D over there. And then I. And, uh, that was the longest description of the fastest two seconds I ever saw in my life. <laughs> so then I got up. <laughs> so I wanted to. Whoa. I'm just saying that's what went through my that's head. What, I'm telling you, like. And they say whenever you get really hurt, like it always happens in slow mo. So I mean, it was like triple slow mo, I guess, the way you described it, because it did not take that long. I mean, it was like I, no, they cracked the gate. It's a crack, crack, bam! You hit the ground and you got up and you were holding your arm like oh. fourteen seconds is a long time. So oh, that's how long I rode oh. that horse. And, I was and like, then I went Ooh. like this. I went. I, I picked up my elbow and ran like that. And I felt that bone, hip bone, and I was like, ooh, crunchy. Yep, bro. That was my confirmation. Wait, if you think the word crunchy in an in- injury, it's broke. you probably broke a bone. Maybe. You probably broke a bone. Maybe so, yeah. So. Um, and then and then you, I mean, I cleaned the whole up and got him out of the arena, and I walked over to Dale, and he was trying to decide whether he was really hurt or he was just injured. And... <laughs> So are you okay? I know you're not okay. You know, you always ask that question. Are you okay right, no. I, when you know they're not okay? Because I just saw him hit the ground. Yeah. And, I mean, it was like he was shot down from a bolt of lightning when he hit the ground. And uh, first thing he hit was his right shoulder. Yep. Really hard. And uh, he said, yeah, no, I don't think I'm all right. I think I'm, I think I'm hurt. And uh, he kind of kicked his hat back, you know, like you do. And it looked like you had poured a gallon of water on him all of a sudden. Yeah. I mean, he just mm-hmm. instantly went to sweating, and I was like, and turned pretty pale, and I was like, "Yeah, you're hurt. I don't know what you broke, but you broke something." Yeah, <laughs> kind of find I know out the feeling. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, this is my third collarbone break, and uh, it wasn't long after that I was like, "Somebody come pick me, grab me." I'm about yeah, to fall. yeah, I'm yeah. About it was right after out. that. Yeah. He was like, "Yeah, somebody better get a hold of me because I, I might pass out." And uh, we did. We got him to the pickup, got him loaded in the pickup, and then we tried to decide where he was going to go, which hospital he was going to go to. Like the last time I was here, before that. This is a common occurrence. I know. Every time you come. That's what I I said. said. I told him I wasn't coming back over here on Sundays anymore and working because every time I do, Donnie got hurt the time before. Yeah, Yeah, you're not supposed to work on Sundays. And and you know what? Like we left Guacamole and I drove by the church and I was like, Uh I should have been in church. Sundays for a day of rest. And Leroy couldn't be there, so like we should have. Mm-hmm. You could do it. You could have done it on Monday, couldn't you? Have? Oh yeah. I mean, should have just done. Why didn't we do it on Monday? Because you wanted to do it on Sunday. Well, I. I well, we did want to do it I on Saturday. That yeah. like. And we changed it. We're gonna do it on Saturday, but of course you had business you had to attend to. What did I? Have the to weather do? wasn't supposed to be cooperative, mm-hmm. but it oh, turned out to be was. gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't say that to everybody because Cowboys was. work in all oh, weather. Shoot. Yeah, we'll edit that out. It was. <laughs> Dale had business. Dale had business to attend to. It wasn't because it was a little cool. It was windy. Well, and windy. You could have worked Monday, but going back to why, it's because this is what you do for a living. So, um, tell us how many days a year you, this year, you think you'll drag calves. Brand, help brand. Mm, I'm going to say, just a guess, just a guess, 40 days. Dang. 45 days. That's somebody doing it for a living. And that's not... So like if you work if you work for a ranch like if you were a camper somewhere or something you would it probably be it might be about the same on the bigger places yeah on them big outfits you know yeah. you might get a month you know a lot of them outfits will, they'll brand for a sixes, month sixes takes we'll Guthrie it takes them a month yeah and then they'll they'll neighbor with Dixon Creek and it takes them two weeks and then Wagner's is completely different. Yeah, that's I mean, like they'll, ninety days. Yeah, they brand for a long time. I know um, nothing of the King Ranch. Yeah, but um, um, anyways, so like the guy that does it for a living is forty days. Give me, I'm curious now, um, what what your percentages are. Um, <laughs> percentages. So I'm definitely like, whoa. Now you're talking. I I'm, got cowboy for a living. Now you're gonna get into like percentages and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Percentages. <laughs> yeah, you might. Have you to might have now. to figure that, Caitlin. You can you figure this number? I what can pers- help. Because because I know you've got multiple streams of income right you know it's you got to. day work you got your own cows 
sell horses, train horses. Have a diversified portfolio. Whatever else. <laughs> right. Fancy. So, and, and what w- the reason why I'm doing this is for those out there listening, like trying to make a go of this. Right. You know, like. You cannot make a go of it day working. It not is correct. Not, not, and I mean, you can. Yes, I'll, I'll take that back. You can. It can be part of the it, equation. It can be part of the equation, or you can just, you know, if you like making $100 a day, yeah. and you're going to work on average of three days a week. Yep. All year long. I mean, so if you make, if you like making three hundred dollars a week, you can live on three hundred dollars a week, you can day work for a living. Yep. But, you know, I mean, if you wanna do better than that, then yes, you have to have a what I say a diversified portfolio. I mean, yep. you have there to you be go. able to do and I do everything, you know. I mean I can weld up I, I heck right now I'm helping rebuild a barn, you know, I mean on my in my spare time. So I do a little bit of everything. I mean I, I, I own part of a uh coffee company and t-shirt company as well i sell animal health products what is it give us a plug uh bison union com, bison union.com um nice. so you know i mean if you're looking for some good coffee we uh have a really good good coffee that we make have four or five roasts we got some cool logo t-shirts kind of like dale wear but I mean, I think our stuff's cool. But better. You know. Yeah. Kind of like, you can say it. Yeah. Kind of like, I mean, everyone's entitled I mean, to their he, own opinion. He made me wear this, but I was I had a Boston Union cap on, but he yeah, made d- me put the old stuff on. Don't act like anybody right. makes you do anything. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right. No, I mean, take that back. I made him. Buster, you're going to wear this cap. <laughs> Uh, you know, like I say, I sell, I sell some uh, animal health products, which I think you've used a few of them. Yeah. Pro Vantage Animal Health. Uh, it's a oh, lick, yeah, the tub. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. At first, I was just saying, yeah. Yeah, I know. I, like, I noticed I like, that. Oh, I'm like, what the? But then I was like. <laughs> See, I'm going to make you throw a plug in well, there. Well, I thought you were talking about like like drugs or something, you know, like. like oh, no, yeah, no. We don't use drugs. Well, I, I mean like Res Say 4 no or something. To, oh, Res know, 4, like Batril, like a, yeah, Bantamine, yeah. yeah. Like I need yeah. my, my <laughs> fix for my yearlings. And then I remembered the tub. You needed some Bantamine the other Sunday when you broke your collarbone. Hey. Oh, uh. Uh, JB takes some sometimes before he rides <laughs> if he's in some pain. Put in his orange uh-huh. juice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And OJ. I don't know if that's. Yeah, don't try FDA that. FDA approved no. people. Don't, but there's yeah. don't do that. There's a lot of what JB does that's not FDA. Approved. <laughs> yeah, don't don't. Do that. There's a lot of what cowboys do that's not FDA approved. <laughs> yeah, JB was in Calgary and he was smoking a cigarette with one hand, sitting on his rigging bag. He was chapped up and ready to go. Cigarette in one hand, beer in another hand, and Jackson. Mortensen um, comes up and says, don't you know cigarettes are bad for you? And it's like, I'm just here to ride bulls, kid. I'm not here to be your hero. That's what I told him. <laughs> and like riding bulls is healthy. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Jackson is uh, his team rodeo time. He's a good bull rider. He was very young at the time. Oh, uh, that's good Anyway, stuff. so uh, back to, you know, you've got a lot of irons in the fire, right. pun intended. So, uh what percentage is day working of your yearly income, do you think? Uh, you know, I mean, I'm going to say it's probably a... Do you need help? Yeah, what is it? <laughs> See, 15, 20%. It's, it's I'm going to say like 20, uh, 23.5%. See, it's almost like, like Go you, and round can, up. you yeah. can... 24. <laughs> Go ahead. 24%. That, yes, that's probably you. too personal of a question. But I guess it's almost like you, you almost need the day work for a guy like you that's as handy with a horse as you are you almost need the day work to use your horses right so you could sell the horse yeah no i, I because agree and I, I you know over the years and I'm, you find yourself i'm sure day working on some horses that are worth a whole lot more than what you're going to make day working yeah no doubt no doubt you know and I, and thank you for saying that i appreciate that i don't take that lightly because i do i i, I take a lot of pride in my horses and i, I always have and i've <laughs> figured out a way to kind of generate some income from selling horses, you know, and so I, I, I do, I, I think even like Dr. Yearlings, I mean, it, it helps my horse flesh tremendously, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it just, it gives them another avenue that you can, you know, go with, and it's, uh, it, it sure enough helps, no doubt about it, you know, I mean, I've sold some horses this last year, and some, uh, about a year and a half ago, I told somebody I probably had the best string of gildings I've ever had. And I had six or seven of them, and I've only got two left, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. so I've I've sold some gildings this last year, and and sold some horses for some good money. And I mean, it's the the horse market is really good right now, and it, it is it it helps. Everything helps, you know. I mean, because yeah. 
you do you can i can make i can make a hundred and a half a day on them you know and enjoy riding those better end horses and then in a year from now i can turn around and they also make me money too you know right. so it's a it, it, it all works hand in hand and if you figure out how to stack it right it it, it piles up pretty high that's such a tricky situation like you've got if you got six eight horses that are like top of the line and you know you got this three or four year old you got to work on yeah like, it's, just like, it's hard <laughs> I, bet. Oh, I was just thinking yeah. that i was like how yeah. when you, when man you, i gotta ride this when bronc. you got them good and then you gotta start over you know yeah, yeah it does it and and right now i've started over i mean like i say i got three three-year-olds right now that and i well i got a two-year-old and two three-year-olds so or three three-year-olds and a two-year-old and so it's like Man, I forget what it's like to ride. You know, you get so used to riding those broker horses where you can just step on them and go do anything. And, you're, you know, they're handy at everything that they do when they're six, seven years old, eight years old. And then you step on those broncs and you're like, oh. Oh, yeah, you don't know anything. Oh, yeah, and then, never and then mind. the opposite happens. You right. get used to riding the Bronx right. and then you get on your old and you're like, oh, man, I, don't, I get to like think about other things right. throughout my day. Yeah, you know, it's so easy. Like, I can step. I'm not punching the pickup. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you can step in a branding pen, you know, on one of them good horses where you can pretty much just take the bridle off of them. They know what they're going to do because they've drug, you know, a lot of calves to the fire, you know. And so you just kind of everything's – it makes it easier to rope then, you know. And so you just – everything, boy, they're like, man, that guy handy with the yeah. rope, which that horse makes you that handy with right. the rope because he puts you in the right spot because you've been doing it for five years on him, you know. And yep. Then you get on a bronc and you're like having to two hand him around and try to pull him around and then take one shot that you get one shot, you know, and you miss. And so it's like, man, that guy's not as handy as we thought he was. Like, what <laughs> then, happened to him? And then you, you, if you came for Dale, like I'm making you bat last. Right. So yeah. You got to clean up. Yeah. You're having to clean up yeah, on your so, bronc. So it's always a pretty good deal. I cleaned up on a bronc the other day. I drug calves on one time and the wind's blowing about 40 miles an hour. One of them northerns hit the other day and there's about 200 calves in a pen and they asked me to clean up and I'm like, Mm, yeah thank you thanks i appreciate thanks. Yeah, that of course i will so but, but then you did yeah You're like yes sir and so you, you bet you know you jump on this bronc and the first three that he don't have any idea he's running off from you you know and then when you get to the people where you're dragging through your flankers he doesn't know which way to go and he's sprawled out on the ground going right left and you're trying to make him go straight you know and, and then you want to look at the boss back like, this yeah. is your fault <laughs> this is your yeah. fault yeah then you ride back in there and there's 10 calves left in a pile of 200 of them and when you swing your rope and you you throw it the wind takes it and blows it off over <laughs> here you're like man like, but you got to do it yeah you just got to you got to get through those hard times to get to the good times you know i mean so, it's just part of it but and then you just hope he runs off in the right direction yeah just go in the right just point him in the right direction and kick <laughs> run off that way <laughs> yeah no doubt i uh i kind of my i was like my old man wanted me to like train my own horses worst idea ever like growing up like i had a couple of horses that were kind of bronx not like <clears throat> i mean they bucked me off but they weren't outlaws and uh i just remember like getting knocked knocked out one horse waking up on the couch i remember like <laughs> he bucked you off in the living room <laughs> yeah damn dude this somebody that's Stick how broke that's how broke my dad wanted him <laughs> wow bring him into the kitchen i mean was it one of the little little ones like this you were riding around in the kitchen and he no. bucked you off and you hit the couch and got knocked okay yeah this right. was go a ahead big, i'm sorry i'll leave you alone one. go ahead um and then and then as i got older i started getting nicer horses and isn't that and, funny how that happens and then like i don't know when the time comes for me to put kids on a horse, I'm going to put them on. They're going to start on damn good horse flesh. Right. Not like stupid money, but like something that will turn, right. go. Go right, go left, know, yeah, stop, stop, back stop, up. Mm. Back up, not run off. Right. <laughs> and uh, I remember a guy coming up to me. Gosh, dang, it since Shamrock. What was his name? It'll come to me here in a minute. I was like 12 years old. He was like, son, you, my friend, are a cowboy. And I said, <laughs> Thank you, sir. And he was like, anybody that can ride a piss head like that, that well, and still be in a good mood. <laughs> and my dad, or my dad kind of like smirking, and I was just like, I knew this horse was a piss head, you know? Like, I knew I it was knew, a piss head. You just didn't knew, even know. Like, I didn't know. Like, yeah, we didn't, never, we never talked about it. Yeah. Like, yeah. he just, and it, and I was like, oh, thank you. And then all, like, I never forgot it, obviously, because that was the moment I realized just how much of a piece of crap my horse was. Uh -huh. And, uh, yeah, anyways, I think 
that's one of the things. Like if you can get a good horse to teach you how to ranch, then later in life you teach a horse how to ranch. Oh, no doubt. I think, I that's, think that's a, a uh, that is a big big time key that a lot of people miss. That I you know I mean. Like I say, I've had the pleasure of riding some really good horses, and they've made really good. There's been some horses that have made me a better cowboy, no doubt about it, a better horse trainer, no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, those those few horses, when you do get on them, you're like, oh, this is what this is supposed yeah. to feel like. Oh, this is what a cowie horse is. This is what one that will ride around. This is, Okay. And if you don't ever get the chance to ride that horse, yeah. then you never know exactly you never know what they're supposed to feel like you yeah. know and so it's like I, it's kind of like feeling a sharp knife you know yeah. I mean, somebody hands yeah. you a sharp knife and you feel it and you go whoa that thing's right. sharp yes. you know like that's what a knife's supposed to feel like that's what a horse is supposed to feel like in in my opinion you know and so i always think that even people coming up younger guys you know that don't have the opportunity to ride a nice horse a buddy of mine went with me the other day and he punches a little bit and rides and does the things but he doesn't ever ride a real good horse you know him and and i let him ride one of my better horses i call ox well yep. saw a horse that i rode up here the other day and uh, when he got done he was like i never rode a horse that even felt like that, that is it because that brand looks like an oxbow yes sir okay yeah exactly I'm just curious. yeah, yeah. Oxbow. i figured it out uh, you got it you nailed <laughs> it uh, i remember the first time i haltered a, a bronc that um like first time it was a filly she had ever had a but the first time a horse with papers so mm -hmm. like <laughs> i was like had well, a little pedigree behind it i was older you know like everything <laughs> else had been grayed uh -huh. you know that tells you how much money we had yeah <laughs> like what's this horse out of that trailer yeah. <laughs> yeah. he's out of oklahoma by truck yes. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah that trailer yeah. right there is what he just came out of and uh it was like it was just this epiphany because uh -huh. i would watch people just be like I don't know how you make that horse do that, you know, but like I knew it could be done, but I've just been, but anyway, and they was, I'm going to have good horses. That's yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Now yeah. I've got bucket head. He's, he's great. He's got this big ass head on him. <laughs> I got bandito looks like a kid drew him. You know, he's got this neck that just like this and, but you shouldn't be so tight with all that money you got. You ought you ought to come uh, uh. I ain't got no. I ain't got that. Why what? do you think I got them huh? horses? I had to nickel and dime you with Buster, Buster Rhymes. Rhymes. Buster Rhymes, what you talking about? But, but then that's what I appreciate those horses. Like they're still a step up from what I started. With. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what about fitness? Fitness. Did, where does fitness fit into your game? My does horses are all in is shape. What are you talking about? My does horses are all in shape. I've is, given is Buster one. Caitlin, your before. trainer. Uh -huh. Yeah. Was... Yeah. No, Caitlin. She. Yeah. She won't. <laughs> no. That was, it. that was it. She's busy with everybody else. I'm not too busy. No. Uh -huh. Else. Uh huh. Fitness. To make time for the little people. Yeah. He just called you little. How do you feel about that? Um, well, maybe I need to get back in the gym. I guess. Obviously, I guess you need to help. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you work out still? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How many times a week? What do you mean still? Do I not look like I work out anymore? What? I well, mean... one time we had a conversation where you <laughs> talked about a back injury. Yeah, yeah. I a... And you worked out a little bit less after. Yes, I did. <laughs> How'd the back injury? <laughs> <laughs> you like break three right. vertebrae, you work out. You tend to work out a little yeah, less. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. Like two back <laughs> like, Why are you wearing tennis shoes in this booth? Yeah, because yeah. Dr. Dossett, my yeah. surgeon who cut yeah. my back open twice, exactly. told me to. Yeah, it makes a difference on how you work out. Yeah, no, I still work out. And, uh, yeah, I've been – I'll tell you what, I I don't even remember when it was. It was 15 years ago, I guess, I probably started working out pretty serious. And uh, I weighed 261, and I'm, I'd been going to a lot of ranch rodeos, and we were, you know, two-day two rodeos and really going pretty hard. And, and uh, I was riding Bronx and mugging cows and doing the deal. And, I mean, I'd be sore, beat up, uh, staying out of shape, just be tore down, you know, on Monday, Tuesday, and then try to work, you know, that next week. And you just feel like crap. And so I decided I made a decision. I'm like, I'm getting back in shape. I was an athlete, you know, in school, and I was always in pretty good shape. And Anyway, so I weighed 262, and uh, I decided I was going to get back in shape. I built me a 
pull-up bar in my my garage, and I got me a Bowflex from a garage sale, and uh, bought me a little TV from a pawn shop, one of them little bitty ones that had a CD player in it, you know, and I bought that P90X. It was big right then, and uh, so every day after work, I worked on a ranch. I ran a place just west of Fort Worth, and, and so I had a little garage out there behind my camp house, and Every day after work, I'd go in that garage. I'd go inside. I'd change clothes, put a pair of shorts on. I'd walk out there in the garage and I'd punch in, punch in op ninety x, and I'd get to it. And it would be, oh my gosh, it'd be hot, you know. Of course, I started in the summer, you know, and right. and it'd be a hundred and thirty in that garage, and I'd be sweating. I'd do the p ninety x. When I got done, I did it all the way through, and was pretty steady on it you know i didn't miss very many days but i did did it the 90 days and when i got done i weighed 191 pounds dang <laughs> it made you what? 70 yes sir it, it made you gain oh 190 no, i weighed 260 when yeah, i started yeah. it when i in yeah. 90 days i weighed 191 pounds i got my so, diet back right and i kind of started but i was sweating like yeah there's no telling how you much started in the summer yeah i mean it was a, i'm not joking it was 130 degrees probably in that garage yeah and so, uh, in summertime though because i was just at first when you started talking i was like gosh dang like you get done branding calves and working all day like Right. Summertime would be a little better. Yes, a little. Because... You, I wasn't as busy, you know. I mean, I was, right. I'd get up and tend to my waters and putting out minerals, just keeping mineral yeah, yeah, out, yeah. you know, okay. and tending yeah. to waters. And then, you know, I'd fix fence or do something around the pens or just fix something until 1 or 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. And gotcha. I'd come home, eat lunch, and take a nap, and then, you know. So you were in the swing of it before, right. like, weaning came along and yeah. there were long days again. Because, yeah. yeah. like, yeah. man, at the end of, like, a long day of, like, sure enough, heavy right. ranching right like, it would be very difficult to start a p90x yes yeah, no doubt and i still like today to to this day i even i always work out in the afternoon i, yeah. I don't like getting up in the mornings and working out because most of the time if you are if you are ranching you're up at three thirty or 4 anyways to catch horses yeah. and get to where you're gonna go right you know by daylight and so you're always <laughs> up early and so still to this day, I work out in the afternoons, and it, it, it confuses people a lot. They're like, you work out in the afternoons? Like, why why you do that? Well, me, it works better for me. I can work out in the afternoons, like or I say 6, 7 o'clock in the afternoon or at night, and then I drink a protein shake, and I'll go home, take a shower, and I'll go to bed, you know. Yeah. And so I don't, I don't eat that supper. I just kind of drink a protein shake and yeah. go at it like that. But, uh, yeah, that was kind of how I got started in my fitness deal and, yeah. And I, it evolved from P90X to it kind of got boring. And so I bought a few dumbbells and then I went and got a gym membership and started going to the gym. And it's kind of like anything I do. I studied it pretty good and went to kind of, you know, there's all kinds of information out there. And I read a lot about weight lifting and, you know, nutrition and what BCCAs are and what, you know, BCA. BCAs <laughs> are and all that stuff. And so it's, uh, you know, I mean, just one of them deals. I still work out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, it, it looked like you didn't, so that's why I figured. <laughs> what, um, did you see, like, a big difference when you started working out versus when you weren't in your, like, daily ranching oh, that yeah, you were no doing? Oh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. You know, and everything. It just, everything, the ranch rodeo started getting better, you know, started performing a little better at everything that I did, you know. I mean, horse-wise, horsemanship was better because I was in better shape. I could, I felt better. I wasn't, I didn't get near as mad about stuff, you know, and training horses will make you, it's, you can be mad as hell 30 seconds and then in 50 seconds you're happy like you did the best thing in the world, you know. I mean, so it's, uh, yeah, it made a difference in everything, I mean, me as a person me as a cowboy me as a horse trainer me as a what you know everything 70 pounds that's like almost a whole person <clears throat> isn't that crazy and i st i walk around now about 220 225 also yeah. oh, you gained it back oh yeah yeah i mean like i was, a, I, was <laughs> a, I was i was little like you i mean i was yeah, skinny yeah, yeah. i got real skinny <laughs> puny man <laughs> what'd you say you're 190 yeah 190 oh shoot i don't know wait will you walk I'm, around that i've probably lost in the last four weeks there's no telling i don't know yeah because i i about Can't 10 days out. ago i started running and biking again yeah but no workout yeah and very little like food so i mean like i eat but just not i don't eat a lot right. a lot and uh i bet before that i was maybe between 165 and 170 yeah 
So there's I'm probably down to 160, 158, something like that. Hey, skinny boy. I'm getting skinny. Skinny boy. Skinny, skinny. Skinny. Do y'all have any questions for Buster? Keep going. <clears throat> did you start? How when did you start cowboying? Did you grow up doing it? You know, I grew up. My dad always had horses around. My dad started colts for the public a lot. My dad trained a lot of rope horses. Yeah. I didn't grow up on a big ranch. I didn't grow up on a ranch. Actually, I mean, we had a little farm. What I would call a little farm. We had about thirty acres in Roby, Texas, and. Uh, my granddad had a little farm right down the road from us. He always kept him about forty or fifty cows, and uh, I didn't. I didn't grow up in I own a ranch. My dad was a cowboy, no doubt about it. But uh, I did. Once I kind of got into sports, I'd always rodeoed. We'd always junior rodeoed, and we always did the play day deals. You know, little kids, and then we junior rodeoed, and I rode steers, and I rode calves, and I team rope with my dad. And then once I got into junior high and started playing sports, all that stuff kind of fell away. You know, I was big into sports, and that's what I wanted to do, and so that's what I did. And that carried through all the way through high school. Like, I I, I could always ride, you know. I mean, hell, I was riding when I was – before I knew how to walk, I mean, you know. So I always could ride. And uh, once I kind of got out of high school, I kind of drifted around and did a few different things. I worked for an outfitter in New Mexico and all over Texas. I guided hunts and did that for about four or five years. Went to college off and on in between all the hunting seasons. Um, chased a girl to uh, Fort Worth, and her and I dated for a little bit. And she was kind of a barrel racer chick, and we uh, I did that deal for a little bit. And I went to work for TU Electric because I needed a job, you know, and so I was a lineman for about four and a half, five years up there in Fort Worth and uh, just got, I don't know, it was just kind of miserable. My life wasn't going like I thought it should and couldn't figure out why. And it was, I think, the main reason now that I look back on it is because I was, wasn't happy with what I was doing. It wasn't me. And I didn't know what was me, but I needed to find it. And so I just walked in one day and turned my tools in and uh, quit and moved to, full, moved to Weatherford and uh, leased me a little old house on a ranch and started riding some colts and helping people and trying to figure out where I could go to learn how to be a cowboy. you probably had a little saved up from being a lineman. Yeah. Y'all, yeah. Made, y'all made dough. Yeah, we made, I mean, I made, enough to like, I made more money then than I ever had in my life. You know, I was a single guy about 24, 25, 26 years old, and I was making, you know, 50, 60,000 a year and at full benefits, you know. I mean, I had a really good job. Hell, if I think about it now, I could have been retired, you know. I started yeah. when I was like 22 with them and uh, 23, I guess. But it's – you know, you wouldn't trade that for being happy. No, no doubt about it. And and I'll and I'll straight up tell that to anybody, anytime, any place, anywhere. You know, I mean, if you're not happy, go find something that makes you happy because everybody always says, and I'm going to change it up a little bit, but everybody always says life's too short to be miserable. My theory is life is way too long to be miserable. Mm-hmm. And you know, I mean, if you're not happy, go find something, take the chance. I mean, yeah, it's going to suck for a little bit. There ain't no doubt about it. I mean, I quit a like I say, I was a single guy, 23, 24 years old. I was making 60, 70,000 a year, you know, had to, all the money that I could spend, you know, and I was miserable, you know, and I was looking for something. And so I was always in trouble. I was drinking too much. I mean, I don't drink anymore because of that, you know, I mean, that was the period in my life right there that caused me to quit drinking because I, I mean, I was, I'm one of those guys that when I do something, it's full on. Like, we're going to do it till it's done, no matter what. I mean, if we're digging post holes, we're going to dig post holes till it's done. You know, if we're going to drink beer, we're going to drink beer until we run out and they don't sell us no more. And so I was kind of one of those guys, and it, it, it didn't do me any good. It caused me a lot of problems in my life, and I, uh, I finally realized that's what was causing some problems is because I wasn't happy. And uh, once I finally stepped out and went and tried to find something, you know, and like I say, it sucks, you know. I was a, I ate beans and tortillas for a lot of nights, you know, because I didn't have any money. But I was happy. And, uh, you know, and so it was one of those deals where I did that and started helping a few people around, and they started kind of thinking, ah, this guy might be, he might be good help, you know. And so I got to, you know, hell, I'd go work for him for free just to have the experience, you know. And I might have one or two horses to ride for somebody, and I'd go help somebody just say, man, I'll just come help you for free because I was making a little bit of money riding those colts. And so once I kind of got my name out there and they kind of got to seeing that, hey, I wasn't just a total 
dumbass, you know, that they <laughs> they would work me. And uh, so, you know, I kind of got to doing that. And at that time, I went to East Texas and uh, right of, I don't know, and I worked on a yearling outfit down there in East Texas for about a year and a half and kind of honed my yearling doctoring skills because we run about 25,000 head of yearlings through that deal in a year and uh, took care of a lot of yearlings and worked a lot. But, uh, you know, I came back and just kind of day trashed around for a few years and rode horses. And I had some dogs in East Texas because you had to have dogs in East Texas if you were going to gather any cows. And uh, so I'd put together a little string of dogs and I came back and a guy asked me to catch a bull for him over and – I went and caught a bull, and lo and behold, I ended up running that ranch for 16 years for them people. Dang. And uh, so kind of how I ended up where I was, and, you know, I got there and kind of just kept kept tuning on my skills and kept working. And then I had the availability where I always had cows around. I always had enough country and kind of got to riding some horses and tuning on horses and figuring out my horsemanship and doing that deal, you know. And I did a lot of stuff by myself just to make myself better. And uh, you know, I didn't get to use much help except on branded days and weaning days and those kind of stuff. So, you know, I was catching cows by myself and tying bulls down and just doing that kind of stuff. So, you know, that's kind of what I did. And here I am now, you know, I'll be 46 in a couple of weeks. And, man, I, I've got my life kind of what I think set up, you yeah. know, the way I wanted it. Yeah. And I, I kind of go and do what I want when I want with who I want and, ride my horses and get to go punch cows and have a lot of fun and get to meet guys like Dale Brisby and Donnie Daytona and gals like Sweet chow. Caitlin, you know, and so it's a it's a cool life. I mean, I, I, like I say, I got a lot of stuff going on. And I enjoy the heck out of it. Yeah, it is really too short to do something you don't care to. That's no uh, doubt about it. There's always a, there's a, there's a point like people just, for some reason, some people have this huge block in their mind where it's maybe it's society or whatever, but some people don't even think about taking a step back to take a step forward. Right. Mm -hmm. Or they think that the, the, the financial difference yeah. is a step back. Yeah. You know? No doubt. You know. And, and, and none of that's the like, number one, even judge, even using finances as the gauge, it still sometimes makes sense to take a step back so that you could take two steps forward. But, at the end of the day, like that shouldn't be the gauge, right? No know? doubt. I mean, I agree. It's but, uh, some people think it's like they're too late. It's too late to start. It's yeah, too late it's, to switch. It's yeah. too late to do anything. Or, or they can't stand how society views it. Like you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, and I that, think a lot of that exactly. The, that. Those two things right there is the main factor. I think you know a lot of people think ah. I'm already here. I, you know, I might as well just stay where I'm at. I know I'm miserable, but it, it'd be it's too hard to change. And like you say, it's a, you know, what's what's my mom going to think? Or what's my right. cousin going to think? Or 100%. what's old Johnny going to think? Yeah. You know, like, well, you know, and I, I always kind of been that guy where I didn't really give a damn what anybody thought, you know. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, I do, but I don't, you know, yeah. I mean. As long as I'm doing the right thing and everything works out, you know, uh, I'm pretty good with who I am and what I am. My granddad told me, uh, he's like, if you come work here, work work for me, I can give you the tools to put you on the path to being a millionaire Yeah. in 10 years. And uh, I was like, dang, I was in high school. I was right out of high school. And he was not this this grant this he wasn't cowboy, you know. He appreciated the culture. Right. He would always hold back, you know. He did all kinds of stuff. He he uh, sold uh, estates mm -hmm. and did a lot in real estate, and he did all kinds of stuff. I don't even know what, but like he, he you know, if a saddle came through or a western painting, you know, he'd he'd hold them back where I could you know look at them, and and <clears throat> sometimes he'd give them to me. But anyway. The saddles were never, you know, something. It'd right. be some old something out of somebody's. But uh, occasionally there'd be a cool painting. You know, right. got a couple of cool guns through the deal. But anyway, um, he was like, and he told me that. And I remember it was around December, and I was watching the NFR on his TV. And I remember like imagining ten years from right then. I was like. 
wearing a, a jacket and a tie, you know, like he would, you know, because uh-huh. he was an auctioneer. And anyway, I was like, w- which one will I have rather have have done? Like, be sitting here in ten years watching my buddies, or would I would rather be out there doing it? You know. Yeah. And I remember that epiphany. It was the absolute easiest no I think I've ever said. You know? <laughs> I still like, you know, and, and he appreciated, he went on, like, it wasn't, and there was never like this moment where I had to decide. Right. But it was the moment where, because I was like, it was my granddad. I wanted him to, you know, I wanted to please him, you know, just because of, you know, I loved him. And so there was that, that drawing, like, I felt like I needed to out of a family obligation. Right. And so there was never this, like, I want to go do that, you know, but on paper, you know, it's like, even if he got me halfway there, yeah, it's still a lot of damn money. No doubt. You know? And uh, I was thinking, I, I don't know, but I was sitting on that couch and I was like, there's there's not a world, because I had watched my old man grow up a completely different lifestyle. Right. You know, cowboy. And when he died, there was $800 in, in his account. We split it four ways. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> but he wouldn't have traded anything, and I no. wouldn't have traded anything. And, uh, Anyhow, so like, it was the easiest no, but it was it was a it was a clear, clear moment where I got to choose. Like, I could literally choose: do I want to pursue money, or do I want to pursue like my passion? Yeah. And it was it was the easiest answer. But so, I guess some people they just get started going down a path, and and that there's not that they don't distinct have that distinction of the clear decision right you know but really every day it's a decision yeah no doubt know? i mean it's a choice you make that choice every day i mean you either can or you I mean you don't one yeah. of the two i mean it's like you like know you had you made a decision yeah you took took them tools yeah in. i took those tools in turned them in those guys were like my mom and dad you know n- not only the boss that i worked for and the supervisor that i worked for because i was a good employee i mean i was a good lineman i worked hard and I always you know i grew up working my tail off you know and so i knew how to work i had a lot of common sense because i grew up on a kind of a farm little farm i mean i knew how to drive a tractor i knew how to run tools i knew how to do all that stuff so when i stepped up there and went to work for him you know i mean they were like hey this guy kind of yeah. you know i just kind of went and did whatever they wanted me to do i could do <laughs> And, uh, you know, b- being a big, strong guy and athletic, you know, I mean, I can do whatever. And I remember there was a guy that went to work with us at the same time. We all hired on. They hired three guys at the same time. And uh, we were there about two weeks at the line yard, and they told us to go cut some old poles up that we'd brought in, you know, cut some telephone or line poles. And uh, the the dude that – one of the dudes that worked there, he was over there, and I was jerking the – copper ground wires off these poles so we could cut them up you know and so here in a minute i like walk around the truck and i'm like why ain't you cutting those he had a chainsaw over there i'm like why aren't you cutting those poles up you know and he's like i don't know i start this chainsaw and i'm like what <laughs> like 22 year old dude you don't have to start a chainsaw i'm like get get out of here and he's like no really i ain't never even i don't he never even picked up a chainsaw you know i mean yeah it's, i was just like that kind of shocked me you know it made me realize man how lucky i am that my granddad and my dad did teach me, you know, that how yeah. to use materials and tools and how to work. You know, my dad was a welder as well. He'd do whatever and anything. I could weld when I was 14 years old, you know, because I had to go do it in the summer with him. You know, I mean, that was – I was free labor. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, you know, the, I, I, you you look back on that now. I look back on it, and, and at the time you think it sucks. Right. But, you know, my boy, he's 15 or be 15 in a couple of months and I'll make him work just like me, you know. And yeah. so it, he times I know he thinks it sucks, but that's what I tell him, you know, you'll look up when you're 25 and you'll be way ahead of everybody else. Yeah. You know, maybe not in the computer spot, you know, but yeah, I mean, they'll teach you that at school. I'll teach you how to work in the real right. world out here. So, yeah, it makes a huge difference. And, uh, it is. It's uh, It's all about, you know, pursuing that happiness, what makes you happy and what you can do, you know. Because, like I say, I turned my tools in, they they all about had heart attacks, you know. Like, what yeah. are you doing? Like, this is this is the stupidest thing you've ever done. Right. Like, you're giving up this good job to do what? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ride colts for the public and punch cows for a living. They're like, yeah, yeah you're not very smart. <laughs> Yeah. Well, kind of find out they were right, but but you, <laughs> but you're happy. I'm happy. I'm smiling. <laughs> you figured out real quick, you know, like you had to add some stuff to it. 
Yeah, no doubt. You know, you no had doubt. to add some stuff to it. Yeah. Because day working, you might can survive on 300 a week. Yeah. But how are you going to get there? Well, you need a pickup. Yeah. Well, Tires. But it's, 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 it's a pretty long ways away, so, okay, you need a good pickup. Yeah. You can't put your horse in the back, back end. You know, stock racks, you can only fit so many yeah. horses in the back right. of the pickup. Yeah, you ain't going to go very far. Now you need a trailer, far. you know. Now you need tires for everything. You need insurance. You need a saddle. So, like, now all of a sudden 300 a week is, yeah, saddle. How good of a horse is You it need to feed be? that horse. Yep. Yeah, that, yeah there's, a, there's a lot of stuff that goes along with it. To, for what we get paid to day work, what we have to have the equipment wise yeah. is, is, <laughs> uh, you can, you can go work for a ranch that right. will supply all of that. Right. One, you need the knowledge beforehand. Right. Number two, um, you you have to sacrifice a little bit of freedom. No doubt, no you, doubt about you, it. You yeah. got a lot more freedom oh, than no a lot doubt. of those guys. Yeah. yeah, no doubt. I mean, I can go where, when, how. I mean, if I would decide I don't want to work this week, I don't work. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's totally up to me, and uh, and nobody's going to say anything about it. You know, I yep. mean, because I am my own boss. I, I make my hires, and I I decide where I go to work. Yeah. And uh, now it's. Hell, I work more now than that I am my own boss than I did when I was working for the ranch. I That's hate to true. say that, but it is. I mean, I'm hustling. It's all about the hustle. Yeah. I mean, like I say, I'm rebuilding a barn for a lady, and I'm taking care of yearlings, and I've got outside horses to ride, and i got colts that I've been peddling and, you know, riding and lining up day work here and there, and then i got cows that i got to go feed and put out mineral and pick up calves and gather bulls and you know i mean it's like i don't have enough hours in the day to do what i need monday. To do. yeah that's just monday <laughs> that's just it's like ooh. and then db wants me to come up here on sunday and work that's just like man yeah you're welcome yeah thank you day. thank you i appreciate that i didn't have nothing to do that day yeah i made you miss church yeah, i know uh, my church is pretty much every day outside yeah. i started going to christian hope here yeah. that's what you said like yeah i like that we That's did good. Easter egg hunting yesterday. Yeah. Did you find any? Like 17. Yeah. Some of the other kids got to them before <laughs> I did. You didn't knock anybody down, did you? Yeah. What was in the eggs? Candy. Mm. Candy. Yeah. I like when it's candy, not bubble gum. I'm all yeah. like when it's money. Yeah. yeah. I'm or like, like you. I'm like, like hey, or the, yeah, yeah, where's the money egg at? <laughs> That's <laughs> the one I'll knock you down for. Yeah. yeah. I told this story on the last, last podcast, but... Um, had a girlfriend in college that had her house broken into. You didn't have no girlfriend in college. <laughs> you went to and college? And I didn't go to college. No. <laughs> there was a college in the town. With a girl. <laughs> and there was a girl there. <laughs> she said hi to him one time. <laughs> she got her house. Easter egg hunting was always a thing for our family. Um, anyways. So, anyway, she got her house broken into. Stole Louis Vuitton bags, her computer, and all of her panties. <laughs> what? You, you don't stole all this? this? No. Hell no, I didn't. <laughs> Wait. No, I do remember this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Weird. Never found who did it. Whatever. What? Was it a girl that robbed her? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Yeah. They were just, I mean, it had to have been Louis yeah. Vuitton bags, a computer. She left her shotgun, and but stole all of her panties. Oh, it's totally a girl. Or a really confused person. Yes. So, anyways, <laughs> a couple of weeks later, we're out at the ranch doing uh, Easter egg hunting, and we all, I mean, everybody hunts eggs. Mm -hmm. They're out in pastures. Like this, it's like three acres. There's still eggs out there to this day. <laughs> and, like, we uh, we get back, we start counting them, and they did, like, have money in them. I mean, I'm like 23. Like, some of them will have money, some of them have, but, like, I want to say 75% of them, we started opening them, had panties in them. <laughs> My mom. <laughs> and so all what? those eggs had to go to uh, my girlfriend at the time. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say they, whoever was stole no, them. No, put them in the <laughs> no. It was, it was my mom's yeah. fun uh, way of helping her, helping her back with her, her yeah. underwear drawer. That's awful sweet of your mother. Yeah. No, they weren't the old <laughs> used okay. ones that had been uh, robbed. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah, that was the most interesting Easter egg hunt I'd ever been on. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look what I got. Right. Yeah. Do I wear these when I ride bulls? What are they? <laughs> new. Anyway, yeah, that's my Easter story, Easter egg hunting story. But oh, shoot. sorry for those of you listening that have heard that story twice now. I don't you, remember that story. 
Well, I meant listening to the last podcast. Oh, okay. You didn't listen to the last one? Uh-uh. Okay. And, well, it's not out yet. Oh. As of today, while we're recording. It will be oh, yeah, gotcha. when the listeners gotcha. are hearing me say this. Gotcha. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Anyway. Any more questions from the left side of the table? Oh, no. Oh, uh, oh here it comes. So you, <laughs> you were talking about how you went to East Texas to ranch, mm-hmm. and you... You ranch kind of mainly on the western side now, so what's right. the difference between the two? Because mm. <laughs> I grew up in East Texas, and when mm. I came out here, it's night and day. Oh, it's night and day, yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, it's just like anything. Ranching is different no matter where you go. You can go down South Texas in the brush down oh, there. Yeah. It's way different. You know, you go to East Texas, it's way different. You go to far West Texas, it's different. Mm-hmm. You go to Central Texas, I mean, it's always different. And then that's even talking about from Texas to Oklahoma to New Mexico to Utah to Arizona, you know, Nevada, Montana. Mm-hmm. Everybody has a little different style. But uh, the difference from where I'm at now to East Texas, you know, a lot of dogs. East Texas has a lot of dogs. There's a lot. It's a lot brushy i mean i don't know it's a different kind of brush i wouldn't say it's a lot brushier but it's a different kind of brush it's a different kind of cow breed wise Mm -hmm. um they they handle stuff a lot different you know the humidity is a lot more than it is even here Mm -hmm. and so it's uh you have a certain amount of time that you can really go at a go at a cow you know and horses and whatnot so you use a lot of dogs because there is a lot of briars and there's a lot of thickets and there's a lot of water um one of the one of the 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 main things that like makes all those places different that um causes the cowboys to be different the cows beat the horses the way we act because the grass is different right Mm -hmm. and so like in east texas like most of those I mean, most two or three hundred acre maybe, places. Yeah. Maybe you know, two you're not getting, you know, then you get out here and you got a ten thousand acre pasture, yeah. you know, at in Colorado with the same City. Amount with the same cows. amount of cows. With the same amount of cows, mm-hmm. and they got a three hundred acre pasture there because they, you know, they can stock it one to one. Yeah, and uh, you know, so it's a so the it, way you gather them. Yeah, it's totally different. different. Mm-hmm. You Completely. know, the pins are different. The way guys gather are different. You know, you I mean, need a different horse. Yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, different shoes on your horse. Yeah. I mean, it's, you need to carry your slicker yeah. with you yeah. all the time. Hats I mean, are different too. Yeah, hats, hats are. Different. Oh, they are all of it's different. Way different. That's like yeah. the first thing you notice. Like, wait a second. The hats, yeah. Hats are yeah. different. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's a. Uh, Everything's different. So you know, and, and it's good. I, in my opinion, I mean, those guys do things because they have to out of necessity, mm-hmm. which in turn you learn those processes as well and then it's like i told my son i was like you can go everywhere and everybody does something different even ranch to ranch it's yeah. gonna be a little you don't right i mean i don't turn my nose up at any of it you know there's there's good things to take from places and there's bad things to take from places and i take all of them you know i watch and see and i take the bad things just like i do the good things and i stack them back in my mind and i go i'm not ever doing that because it does not work that's like one of my one of my internal I don't want to like nervousness when you go to a new place. Like, right. what will be different here, and when will I find out? Yeah, yeah. Will it be too late when I find yeah, out? Yeah, no doubt. And you know, and it is. It's those deals. Like you can. Go, it doesn't matter. You can go to them big outfits, and you can go to them little two hundred acre deals. And the two hundred acre deal might have a really cool process that they do that you learn something from. And then you can go to one of them big outfits, and you're like, wow. Ah. That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I don't know why they do it like that, you know. And it's, you know, I mean, hell, you can come to work with me, and I do some dumb stuff, you know. I mean, people will probably be like, what, what do you do that for? That's stupid. Well, you know, I mean, you got to take the good with the bad, and you got to learn it, and you got to process it, and you got to go on with it. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's good to get out. You know, those guys that don't ever get out, they're generally not that handy because they only know one way, and that's that. Well, this is the way we've always done it. Well, there's a better way out there, you know. Sure. I mean, go find it, go look for it, go try to see a better way to do that. You know, I was watching the deal the other day, and the phones and the internet made stuff so much easier now. You can access so much information, and you can access so much knowledge through that phone that you hold in your hand that we do all our business on that i do all my business on dale does all his business on you do all your business on i mean it's it's crazy how we've reverted to that but it is the way it is mm-hmm. and you know i was watching a deal the other day my mom sent me a little link that i clicked on it and it was on youtube some guys had made a gate where they were stripping cows and it was the handiest little deal. It was actually wasn't even a gate. I've seen the gate where they've cut the, the bottom, bottom out of it. Yeah. yeah, but these guys went in there and took in a corner of the pen, and they just took and made runners 
big enough for the calves to go through. Dang. So it was like a sift. Yeah. The calves could go through there, but the cows couldn't. And so they were just, one guy was sorting cows, <laughs> stripping cows, and the calves were going through, and he was letting the cows mm-hmm. out, you know, and I was like, that's pretty handy right there. Right. The mm-hmm. gate deal, you have to have it set up exactly right. Right. And have to have it cut off at the bottom, and you have to have it going down an alley and everything. But this guy went in there and took and just took two and seven eighths, two and three eighths pipe and just made runners like where they could walk through them, you know. I mean, yeah. it was just it looked like a rake sticking up there. I don't know. See, some of my cows get pretty skinny. (laughs) Surely they don't get that skinny. Yeah, get the oh, their hips. Now all of a sudden you got four cows in there. Hung, like Like minnows. I hope you can run a cutting torch. (laughs) But you know, I mean, that kind of stuff is is all out there today. You can you can access information if you want to learn something. uh, My boys taught me that. You know, he's fourteen years old, and he's like, "Oh, just YouTube it." I'm like, "What?" Yeah. Yeah. He's like, just YouTube it. You'll yeah. find out how to do it. And I'm Dale like, Brisby's. Yeah. Dale just Brisby's. ranching series. Yeah, just will ranching. Pop up. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was our. No, problem. there's there's a lot of differences in every place you go. And I mean, some's right, some's wrong, some's indifferent. And some you like turn your head because you don't want to see it. You're like, oh, no, don't do that. Yeah. That's not going to be good. But it's like I told a boy the other day, we were in kind of Wills Point, which is kind of East Texas. And, uh, he was getting frustrated. He was a younger guy. He was getting frustrated. It was just him and I there with some other guys. And I said, man, don't worry about it. I was like, in Rome, when in Rome, do as Romans do. I was like, this is their place. They get yeah. to run it like they want to. They get to have a branding like they want to. They don't have to do it like us. Right. We're here. They invited us. They're very hospitable. We'll do it like they want to do it. It's That's- just the way it is, you know. I mean, if you don't, roll your bed and go somewhere else. Yeah. Mm. That's, that's where I'm at, like – I'm a, I'll take a chewing. Oh, know, no if I doubt. do something wrong, like I get no it. Doubt. You can tell me, but like if I go, I've got some buddies in East Texas, and or if somebody comes here that just doesn't know, you know, right. like, I don't know, like 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 that's what Peter told me. He was like, "Man, you're pretty patient." And I was just like, "They don't know. Yeah. Somebody so and so doesn't know. How like, are they gonna know if they how, don't know? Right? You know, like I mean, I mean you, if you don't teach them and you don't show them, right? I'm not. I mean. It's his first time. Yeah. You know, like I'm not going to I'm not going to yell at him right now. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Right now. Right now. Maybe you know, if I tell him five times and he's still doing it that way, then maybe I'm going to yell. Well, I maybe, had to, yeah. that particular person I did take four and five times. But once he got it, yeah. He got it. Yeah, that's all. I just I mean, I, I appreciate you not that, yelling at me. I, I needed to get to that fifth time. To right. <laughs> but anyway, no, I I'm, I'm with you. That's what I'm like if I I go to some places where it's just like not the way my old man would do it, then right. you just kind of got to roll with it. You know, take that's, note. that's another thing too. Like I, I mean, I feel like I'm pretty good at what I do, and I'm not the best by any means, no doubt about it. I know lots of better cowboys than I am, but even when I go somewhere, whether if it's different, I sit back and I ask. Uh, you know, I'm like, hey, how do you want me to do this? How you mm-hmm. how would you like to do this? What do you want me to do? You know, where I think a lot of young guys think that's the only way they know how to do it. That's the only way that it's done. Yep. And you know, they get they get themselves in a little trouble, and I have a hard time with it too. You know, I mean, I get around some younger guys, and they're like, well, that ain't the way we do it over here. I'm like, well, you ain't over there. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I yeah. okay, you've been being a cowboy for five years, and yeah. that guy's been running cows for 40 years so you know you might want to shut up and listen right and if you don't like the way he does it then don't come back you know i mean be respectful of where you're at be respectful of how they do it you know if you if you if you don't like it and you just can't stand it then you know politely decline next time they ask you you know and they're probably not going to ask you anyway if you're a jackass the whole time you're there so even like if i go to arizona i'm in like i i sit back and like hey well, you know, pay attention. Keep your eyes open, your ears open. Keep your mouth shut. Pay attention to what the guys do, and try to do the best that you can following those guys. And I think that's in anything in today's world. You know, a lot of guys think they know when they really don't, and they open their mouth. What is it they say? God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. Yeah, yeah two so. nostrils too. Yeah, exactly. people don't smell enough. No, people no. don't use their nostrils enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just smell the situation. <laughs> Exactly. Yikes. Exactly. What you got, Donnie? Come on. Come on, Donnie. Question-wise? Whatever. Oh, 
I was just thinking about smelling more <laughs> that you said that, but now you, put you me were just on the thinking spot. about what smelling, smelling more. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're right, Dale. That is a good reminder. Stop Everybody, and... smell. Stop and smell the Stop roses. And smell the roses. Yeah. I'm gonna use my sniffer more often, yeah, Dale. Yeah. Thank you for that reminder. <laughs> Sometimes you don't want to smell. I'm not yeah. gonna use my sniffer around y'all yeah. more than I already no do. No doubt. Yeah, please don't. Yeah. No well, we usually give life advice at the end. Life advice. Yeah. We just did. Stop and smell that the roses. That is kind of what it was. Use your nostrils. That's your life advice? My life advice. Stop my. and smell the roses. <laughs> no. No, that is not my. That's Caitlin's life advice. What are you talking about? She sure. just said, yeah. Sure. Stop and smell the roses. Why not? I do you have know. Caitlin? You knew this was coming. That's it. That's mine. Buster can't steal it. I'm not stealing it. Yeah, I told you that was Caitlin's. I, I'm going to. I'll come up with my own. We got Donnie. Uh, good judgment comes from uh, experience. <laughs> experience comes from bad judgment. There you go. I got some experience this past week. Heck yeah. <laughs> 24 <laughs> frames a second. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bingo. <laughs> 24 <laughs> frames a second. <laughs> yeah. Bingo. Happens to the best of us. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. It's, it's hard for me to get mad at stuff like that whenever I've done it it just I, it just sucks that it happened it was like with neil these yeah. good people came and yeah. that's what sucks yeah it, it sucks that it happened with neil but nonetheless i could we can get him to send us a video on his iphone yeah that'd be cool or just come back down i bet he would turn around i bet yeah. they're not that far away <laughs> really, <laughs> really? <laughs> he's in oklahoma uh, somewhere i don't yeah. i don't want to ask him to turn around no. yeah no. Then he has a blowout, and he's on the side of the road. Then it's we're going to feel fault. even worse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, Just send me a video on your iPhone. <laughs> uh, I think my, my life advice, one that I've shared recently, is a uh, man has two lives, and his second one starts when he realizes he only has one. That's right. That's right. Wow. Yeah. That's deep. That is really good. Wow. Some guy on a Joe Rogan podcast shared it. That's really good. And that's the third time. And you I've remembered given, it. I've given Joe. Yeah, it hit me. It hit me. No I'm doubt. like, Word. Word. Ain't it funny how like uh, when someone like you hear something like that and like sometimes they'll just go like in one ear and out the yeah. other, but some of them really like hit home. Yeah, sometimes it's, it bloodies your nose. Yeah. Yeah, and it's the timing of sometimes it's all about the timing yeah. of when you hear it. Yeah, yeah no know. doubt. But no doubt. Are you gonna go with smell the roses? No, I can't Caitlin's already told me I can't steal it, so oh, okay. I'm gonna okay. have to like come up with my own. Okay. I think uh my life advice today would be Never, ever, ever miss an opportunity to meet somebody because you mm. never know what that person will do for you or with you or how they could change your life or how you mm-hmm. could change their life. Mm-hmm. And I think that's I think that's how we really met. I mean, I don't know, six, seven years ago. How did y'all meet? <laughs> he, he needed a mentor. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> did he save you? <laughs> <laughs> no. Somebody told him to come up and act like he wanted to fight me. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody told me that. I just made that up on my own as I saw you coming down the hall. We were at Houston Yeah. at the rodeo. And uh, long story short, and we'll kind of get into it, but my girlfriend at the time showed up. I'd seen Dale look around a couple of videos here and there, and he's kind of starting to be – he was an avid fan. Don't <laughs> let him lie to you. <laughs> he, he is starting to kind of be somebody, you know, like he's hearing Dale Brisby, murmurs of Dale Brisby and this and that. And I was like, who's this Dale Brisby? He guy? already had the bumper sticker on his truck. On the uh, next one. <laughs> so the girl I was dating at the time, she went to a Western Wear store and they gave her one of Dale's shirts that had his face on it. Said Del Brisby. They gave couldn't sell them. They gave it away. <laughs> they gave it away, yeah. She bought like a package of bubble gum and they gave her the shirt. Yeah, yeah. Said, please right. take this out of here. Right. Yeah, no. Bought, but, bought some gum. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she came home and she was wearing this Dale Brisby t shirt. And I, like I said, I'd seen him around a few t- things here and there and just seen a few videos. And I was like, where did you get that sh- shirt at? She was like, I ain't gave it to me up there at the Western Wear store. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> so. That about a week or two later, we're down at Houston at the Ranch Rodeo, and Dale was down there doing his booth, and I was standing with a friend of his that he went to school with, and we were BSing, and I seen Dale come walking down the alley. I was like, huh, there's old Dale Brisby. That's that guy right there. So he come walking up there, Zach and he got – Zach Burson. Yeah, Zach Burson. I was standing there talking to Zach, and at that time, I had – kind of longer hair and i had a goatee that was about this long like i mean i was it was long and uh, pretty nasty looking <laughs> and dale come trotting down the alley being dale he gets about for me to 
Donnie and I said, hey, I said, next time my girlfriend comes home with your face on her breast, I'm going to whoop your ass. <laughs> and he looked at me like I had fell off the moon, like he had no idea who I was, what I was saying. He was like, excuse me? And I said, next time my girlfriend comes home with your face on her breast, I'm going to whoop your ass. I'm going to come find you and I'm going to whoop your ass. And he said, I hope you're joking. <laughs> Well, I had heard, I was kind of starting to put two and two together, Buster Frierson was. It was kind of the same thought whenever, like, I kind of figured it out, but, like, Wakefield, we met um, outside of a hotel in Mesquite. We were about to uh, help Tony Hunter, uh -huh. Brand. Yeah. And uh, they were already drinking beer. It was like no, 5.30 in the morning. Imagine that. He, I walked up, and he goes, you must be Dale Brisby. <laughs> and I said, you must be Ryan Wakefield. <laughs> Our reputation precedes each yes, other. So. <laughs> uh, that's how me and Dale Brisbane. met. I still got a picture, actually, on my phone. Oh, I remember it. Yeah. yeah. I remember I was wearing that little maroon hoodie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> with I your, was, with I was, your mud boots. I was scared. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was scared. I don't like. I've never really fought. And I don't really want to. Like, I've been beat up enough in the arena. It's just like, I mean, at least if I'm going to do it, I might as well, like, have a chance at winning money. <laughs> if you fight a person, like, yeah. there ain't no way you're – I mean, like, what you get to say, you beat somebody up. Yeah. But wait, was this 190 Buster or was this 260 Buster? I don't think it 190. matters. 190. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Donnie. Yeah. As if it mattered. I think it was 190 Buster. Yeah, I, would, I was probably yeah, I was probably right around 215, 220 about it the wasn't end. It yeah, was, wasn't know. no 260. I don't no, know. it was like five or six years ago. Well, it was about six years oh, ago. okay. So it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have been about the time I moved up here. Yeah, about six years ago. Coincidentally, the first time I met Buster was right after I had been in a fight. And yes. I, oh, he was there. Yeah. I was. Yeah. Well, it was the next day? Yeah. yeah and I was like, or that night? The next I was there day. that was night. Missed yeah, he was I was there. there the night, but I wasn't in on the... I was, was on the other side. Like a, yeah, well, like, I wish minute. you would have been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. I saw it go down, but I was on the other side of the establishment and trying to figure like, out what's going on. I'm like, I, don't know was. I was kind of checked everybody out, and I was like, I have three buddies of mine that were standing by the door when I came in, and it was right over there pretty close to them mm -hmm. that it happened. And so I was making sure they were okay, and I could see them. And I'm like, ah, hell, there's my buddies. I don't know nobody else over there. And they go, this kid's. Dumb kids getting in fights, you know, yeah. dumb kids. I imagine you weren't – you don't wish it had been different as much as yeah, so the so other did. guy with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah no doubt, yeah, no doubt. Guy. Yeah. That's all we needed is somebody to just walk up and be like, hey, Seriously, and just it's be just like, a big misunderstanding. Yeah, yeah that's I, all we that's needed. What I was like, man, yeah. See, I avoid situations like that because it's like Dale is like – I mean, that's a that's a lose lose for me. Right, no doubt, what, no doubt, know? yeah, no doubt. It's a lose lose for me. <laughs> well, it wasn't really that big of a win for me. Either. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just there to have a good time. What is that? Uh, what'd you just? Say? What was your life lesson for today? Uh, what'd you say? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> what'd you say? Experience or good judgment comes from experience, and experience comes from bad judgment. Yeah, so, yeah. there you go. Yeah. But didn't I didn't I drag y'all there? Mm. I think so. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. weren't you the uh, <laughs> yeah. the leader of that one that night? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did it take came that out, much dragging? Came out scotch free though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't take much dragging. No. Yeah, I was about to say drag. Was I was the right itching. Word. I came out pretty scotch free too myself. Right. I just felt bad for the other guy. Yeah. yeah. And and by the other he guy, did not. By he, the other guy, he's not talking about the one he was fighting. No, yeah. 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 no I'm not talk, I'm talking about the person. It was, I was, it was his uh, tag team partner yeah. on that deal. Yeah. yeah. But on to the next yeah. one. Yeah, on yeah. to the next one. Old son, pow pow. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't care to. I don't care to 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 no. have altercations. No sir. But nobody wins. Nah. Never. You never win. It's weird how it used to be so different. Oh, yeah. Like back in like my old man's rodeo days. Like, just like, that's just like what you did. It was kind of different how people handled it back then, though. People just I feel like somebody could be like, left it. Like, you could walk up to this table and be sitting here for an hour 
and be like, oh, yeah, no, no, no. I just got in a fight right yeah. before I got, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. y'all could talk about other things. For You know, it's just like, yeah, yeah no, 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 no. He got knocked out. Yeah. I knocked that guy out. He's yeah. a, he's asleep right now. You know, like, that could be like a thing. It's like not even like you just walk. Oh, you know what? I did get in a fight last night. Yeah. You know, like the way yeah. they talk. It wasn't any big deal. Right. I mean, it, 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 you know, and I, I'm not that old, but, you know, I mean, Steve, in my younger days, it wasn't that big deal to have a little boxing match. I mean, if you had a disagreement, you just box somebody, you know, yeah. I mean, and then you got up and walked off and you learned your lesson and you went on. Nowadays, it's not that way. Somebody pulls a knife or a gun or puts a boost, you know, I mean, it, everybody just goes too, yeah. too far. Or there's six of them. <laughs> yeah, or there's six of them, you know, I mean, yeah, no doubt. I mean, that's the thing nowadays, like, there's not really a fair fight well, whatsoever because always somebody wants to jump in on it, you know, and it's like, if you you see on. me fighting, jump in, jump in, in because <laughs> I didn't want to. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Or try to stop it. Yeah. yeah. Just because that's the only thing with me. Like, I, like uh, somebody was saying, like, well, would you jump in on so and so? I was like, well, no, because they were telling a story. Like, would you have jumped in? And it sounded the way they were telling a story. Like, these two people, they wanted to fight. They had, like, talked about it and they were going to meet. And it was like, well, no. Not then, because they want to fight. But like, if you got this guy over here, he's terrified, <laughs> and he don't want to fight at all, yeah. and he's just getting his ass Buster! kicked. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, that's a different. That's a different story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah you're right. When Corey like met yeah. that guy, and they just like talk on the phone about uh-huh. it, and then they meet each other and uh-huh. go head on. It's yeah. just like it's like a, well, that's that's different. Yeah, that's like, right. They like yeah, that's a that. different deal. Yeah. yeah, that's like a like a side you know boxing match where right. we're trying to settle a dispute right on but anyway whatever and girl fights are different too than guy fights <clears throat> i'm i'm just all i'm saying is i think i think it's smart to try to talk your way out of anything what what makes me nervous is the day something comes along where and i was in a situation recently where you know you can't talk your way out of it right you know and uh i was just with some guys and unfortunately, I find myself being loyal. To, <laughs> I was about to. Get, I was like, I'm about to get cleaned up by these rednecks. They're about to, but uh, that's that's what makes me nervous. Find myself something I can't talk my way out of. Uh huh. Or someone won't. Someone you're with won't let you. <laughs> yeah. 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 And like someone you were loyal to will not let you. That's uh-huh. it. Yeah. Fortunately, in this situation I'm talking about, they were talking it down. Yeah. And then I went around the corner and got two more of our buddies, and, and it was five on three. And that 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 dissuaded their they they desire didn't needed yeah. to yeah, as badly. Yeah, five on three. Like, mm-hmm. They probably still could have whooped our ass. <laughs> they didn't know that. <laughs> they didn't know that. No one going to tell them. <laughs> well, um, last last word of advice: don't fight, kids. Nobody yeah, no wins. fight. Yeah, be nobody a wins. Be a lover, not a fighter, and. Um, on to the next one. Pow, pow. Oh, son. <laughs>